Alright, um, I got a request to do a function overload and a overload um, operator demonstration. I'm going to start with function. The issue is um, the YouTube site only allows 10 minute videos. So um, I have to break them down. I'll just start with the easier function one. Okay, let's get into our main body here. Um, I'm going to use function overloading uh, by using math demonstrations. Now, uh, let's get to it. Let's create our integers. created my variables and I've set them to basic numbers here um, for our use. So uh, let's um, let's say we want to add number one to number two. So we want to get the result of that. Ooh, no, I haven't written the function yet. I'm, I'm gonna get to that in a minute. Um, so we want to add number one, number two. Now. It's very important to notice that when I'm passing it as int and the number is 1, so result should be 2. Okay, so by all means and purposes, if you're reading a, an overloading tutorial, not reading but watching one, you should be able to look at that program and know exactly what's going on. So I'm not going to get into it. But I'm going to go over a key point here. These numbers, these variables, are references to integers. Okay, that's very important when you're thinking about overloading. So let's create our definition here. Okay, so we want to return an int the function we called add int int. Okay, that's our function prototype. Now uh, let's write the function. Basically, all we're doing is we're going to add A to B and return it, just like that, okay? So, let's run that. Okay, perfect, it works too. We haven't actually gone into any overloading yet. Um, let's, I want to just put a little bit more space, because I don't know how clear with video compression and all that crap it's going to come out for you. I'm going to just go ahead and make a bigger gap so you can see the two there now. So, uh, everything seems to be working fine. We've created a function, we've used it, blah blah blah. Now let's say, for example, in our program we're using floats. Now it's easy to lose track of um, different variable types and stuff. And when you want to add two numbers together, you want to be able to just add them and not worry about it. Let's watch what happens here. Okay, it works, but let's take a look at what we have. Okay, we are converting on the fly different types of information. Um, we're converting from integer to float, and then when we return it, we're returning it back to an int. Okay, so let's say that the number is 1.1. Let's do it again. Okay, we all know that floats use decimal numbers, right? Um, you're going to keep getting those warnings because, and you're losing, you're definitely losing information in the process here, okay? You shouldn't have to worry about um, truncating things like that. Like, if you're writing a video game, for example, and um, uh, we'll say that uh, someone's life, you do it by a percent instead of showing the actual life to the user. Now internally you would keep track of the life and then you would need to use the same function for example to display it as a percent. Now a percent is going to have a decimal point 
for our purposes. So to do that, what we would need is to create the exact same function, okay? Add. This time it's going to take floats. Now, if you notice, the function name is actually the same, so it's overloaded. So how do you call the one you want? Well, you don't. Um, the compiler has enough sense to know which one to call. Like, um, if you're using a really old compiler, um, it may have problems with this. Uh, from what I heard, like really old versions of Borland had a problem with it, and some free ones. Aside from that, other newer conventions in the C++ language are probably missing as well, and you should just update. You can get free ones that will handle this just fine. So let's go ahead and build that again. No warnings, no errors. Why do you ask? Because when it was a float, it actually passes it into this one and returns it properly. No information is lost. All right, and when we put it back to int. No warnings, no errors. You, oops. <laughs> That's, yeah, I natively ran it, my bad. Um, ran it through the debugger. Um, it did it again. There would be no errors, nothing like that. It chooses to use this one because it handles all ints. Now, what if you have a float and an int? Um, it becomes a little trickier. Um, if you're using a float and an int, you're probably going to want to return a float. Okay, but you're going to take one int and one float. Now, take a look at that function. There's a key thing wrong with that. For that function to work, you would have to use the integer first. If you put the float first and then the integer second, it would probably, there's no way to tell which one your compiler is going to use, but data is going to be lost, which means for that to work, you would need to do this. That way it doesn't matter what order you put it in. See, we got the int can be first or second, can be first and second, float can be first and second. So now between ints and floats, we have covered every possible combination. Um, now to just write it. And because there's a float in there, you gotta return a float. Because you don't know if there's gonna be a decimal point. So float add float a int b now the reason why I did it like this is because there's something you need to be aware of um, we are adding two numbers and we want to return a float so the integer needs to be typecasted um, ourselves if you typecast something um, it's not you're not relying on the compiler to do it. You're not going to get errors, and you can do it safely. Um, typecasting, I'm going to save for another tutorial, but um, it's got to be a little different. So we want to convert B to a typecast. So we're going to make float C, and C is going to be equal to a float of B. So we've taken B, converted it to a float, and assigned that number to C. So now we can return. A plus C. See how that works? Um, the same thing is going to have to be done down here. Float C. Um, this time we've converted A though, so C is equal to a float A. And then you return A plus C. Sorry, my wrong. B plus C. There, now we've done every possible combination of an integer and float number, so now we can build it. like that. So with this in mind, now we can 
we can break this up. Um, for example, we can do like this. Um, now we can really 